Chancellor, we come to the conferment of our honorary graduand. Chancellor, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce Paul Stein, a man of great capability in the aerospace and wider technology industry, and a man who through his position as CTO of one of the world's greatest engineering companies, Rolls-Royce, is in a unique position for shaping the future of the sector and the world in which we live. Paul Stein has an extensive background in science and technology. Paul graduated in electrical and electronic engineering from King's College London in 1978. He started his career at Phillips Research Laboratories in Redhill, Surrey. In 1984, he moved to Multard Equipment Limited, also owned by Philips, to apply these skills to defence products, and the rest is history, as they say. He continued to build experience in the sector and gained the responsibility that goes with it, becoming the managing director of Roke Manor Research Limited, part of Siemens AG, for 10 years. In 2006, he left the private sector and joined the MOD as their science and technology director. It was in this role that I first knew Paul. I learned to recognize his breadth of knowledge and intellect, but also of his determination to see his ideas through to practice. It was no great surprise to me when Rolls-Royce seized their moment back in January 2010 to take him back into the private sector as their chief scientific officer, with responsibility for augmenting the group's strong technology base. It was from this position where I got to know him much better, for example, through our respective board positions on the Energy Technology Institute, where his passion and, again, his determination to see his ideas through again impressed me. The words, Paul, small modular nuclear reactor, will forever live with me in my memory, a memory of you during that period. His influence on the company grew. His determination for change stayed with him. And the two words that seem to have characterized him more in more recent years at Rolls-Royce are digital and electrification. For a traditional turbo machinery manufacturing company, this is massively, massively disruptive, but was just what the company needed in a changing world. Again, it was no surprise, Paul, when just over a year ago, in April 2007, he was appointed as Chief Technology Officer, reporting to Chief Executive Warren East. In this role, Paul is accountable for Rolls-Royce's technology investment and for ensuring its close alignment with business strategy. Surely, Paul, one of the best and most influential engineering jobs in the world. Paul is a fellow of the Royal Academy of Engineering, a fellow of the Royal Aeronautical Society, a fellow of the IET, and is also on the advisory board of many government bodies. But what of the other side of Paul? Paul Stein is a family man outside of work. He's married to Julie with two children, two stepchildren, and somehow manages to live a double life in both Harrow and Derbyshire. He's a private person outside of work, but is a renowned gadget freak. As I understand it, one of his great hobbies is flying model helicopters. Not just flying, but aerobatic flying, very much connected to his vision of an autonomous and digital future. His determination for all things digital extends into his home life. He has programmed Raspberry Pis to control almost everything in the house, much as I understand it to the annoyance of Julie, who can control nothing when Paul is not there. He installed an extensive network of CCTV cameras, but claims it paid for itself when his lawn maintenance company sent him a large bill for one and a half hours' work, he was able to send them back a video clip of their van arriving and then leaving 20 minutes later and got a full refund. So a clear message for all of us who have contracts with Paul. 
Beware. Back to his professional role, he is also extremely interested in developing the next generation of engineers and is actively engaged in talent development for the company. I have seen Paul in action with young engineers, challenging, but coaching and encouraging in a way that can only be good for developing the engineers of our future. In this regard, Paul is a role model for our own students and for those engineers entering the industry for the first time. He illustrates just what can be achieved with knowledge and with determination in this great aviation industry to which we are part of. He is a tireless ambassador for the sector. And so, Chancellor, I am authorised by the Council and the Senate to ask you to confer on Paul Stein the degree of honorary, the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa. I'm delighted to admit you to the degree of Doctor of Science, honoris causa. Ian, what a fantastic build-up on the speech. Thank you. <laughs> but Chancellor, Pro-Chancellor, Vice-Chancellor, Honorands, staff, students and guests, receiving this honorary doctorate for me is just a very proud moment. Um, and one reason why I'm particularly proud, as you'll gather from Ian's introduction, is that actually I'm relatively new to aerospace. Uh, in fact, I joined Rolls-Royce um, from another career in 2010. So to have risen to the point of such recognition from such a great university as Cranfield is just a source of immense pride to me. And many, many thanks to the university for having conferred this degree on me. Cranfield University has many world-class schools, but it's perhaps the School of Aerospace, which has long been associated with Cranfield's history, its facilities and its long association with Rolls-Royce. We mustn't forget the great work here on innovative manufacturing, Innovative manufacturing is the key to turning what we do in our research programs into practical things we can sell and export. The two go hand in glove, and we have to do that as an industry. My personal career journey has involved many changes, as Ian has introduced. I graduated uh, in electronic and electrical engineering in 1978 as, as, as Faraday's apprentice, some people joke. Um, and I spent the early years of my career figuring out how the newly invented microcontrollers, which had just come onto the market at that time, could be used in new applications such as early generation mobile phones. But I also discovered I had to sell my designs to lifelong conventional circuit designers who didn't want to hear that some new technology was set to replace their lifelong skill. So I learned many lessons which perhaps I can share with you graduands. They seem to apply as much to aerospace as to mobile phones as anything else in technology. And the first is just don't assume that your technology, your invention, your ideas will sell themselves. You've got to learn how to sell as well as to invent. Learn how to think at systems level. Uh, and some of you aircraft designers I've heard, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping already think at systems level because the answer to a challenge could be at system level rather than optimising your bit of it. So understand to be a leader in innovation um, rather than just an inventor, you've got to be able to think at system as well as detailed level. And please don't cling on to the past because when you're my age and your electric aircraft is a mature product and it's about to get overtaken by warp drive with dilithium crystals or something like that, don't be the person who doesn't want to hear this because it will replace your lifelong skill. Be hungrier to learn a new skill than to polish an old one. My day job involves playing around with, with jet engines and nuclear reactors and big diesel engines and how electrical and digital technology is changing our landscape. So it's quite a good job, really, um, and one that one of you might be doing in a few years' time. But hopefully you can see that some of the simple principles I've said to you still apply, even as CTO of Rolls-Royce. 
Although we've got a long history together, Rolls-Royce and Cranfield University, our significant relationship with Cranfield really dates back to 1998 when we set up a UTC, a University Technology Centre here, to conduct research into gas turbine performance. Um, and one of the great qualities of our Cranfield UTC uh, is you, that at any one time there are up to four master's students helping with Rolls-Royce projects at any time. And that, combined with the unique f facilities here at Cranfield, gives it a special place in our UTC network. Rolls-Royce, um, without bragging too much, is now only one of two companies in the world able to make jet engines for the wide-bodied long-haul flights, only ourselves and GE, and now we're soon to become the number one in market share, uh, which is really quite an achievement for a UK company and quite an achievement for all of our research network, and many thanks to Cranfield in contributing to that great position. And with passenger aviation still growing at 4.8% per year, it's a great time for you all to be entering aerospace. It really is a growing industry. But as I said before, it's not just about innovative turbo machinery and aircraft design. Cranfield's strength in innovative manufacturing, operations, and through life engineering, make sure we've got the research and skills from Cranfield to make money out of these products. And the icing on the cake is the School of Management here, which as we change the face of aerospace, brings together all these skills to reposition this great industry. Things are changing very rapidly, um, and we're going to explore together the electrification of aviation and how it's not just going to change aviation, but the way citizens of this planet travel in large numbers. It's seen as that big a deal. What an exciting time to be entering aviation, and I kind of wish I was in your position in many ways. So for all these reasons, it's a great honour and with great pride that I received this award from Cranfield. I wish all of you graduates great careers ahead of you, and I'm sure you will have great careers. I wish Cranfield University continued success in teaching, research, and playing an ever more vital role in the future of aviation. And thank you very much. Thank you.